Hey couples, today we're going to give you a little tool for the toolbox for the next time that you get in a conflict or a fight with your spouse. It's something that counselors use uh, in the context of a counseling appointment and it's called relational immediacy. This is when you invite someone to stop and reflect on what just happened relationally or emotionally in a conflict. So Trace, maybe to explain this to couples out there, we can just pull the curtain back on our own marriage uh, because we've used relational immediacy a lot in over 20 years of marriage. It's been really, really helpful for both of us. So maybe you can share the most recent example of when you had to get relationally immediate in conflict with me. Yeah, what comes to mind is a few weeks ago, you came home, you've been in meetings all day and I was excited to share some family news with you. And I noticed that when you came in the house, you didn't really come in and greet me. You know, I was more excited to see you than you were to see me. You kind of would just went right to the bedroom or changing your clothes. And so then I kind of followed you in there and I'm sharing some of the things that are going on and just your responses were just, you were just kind of snippy and short. And so I really had a choice in that moment, as I'm sure other couples could relate to this, where I could have kind of snapped back at you. I mean, I was feeling internally just frustrated, like, why is he being such a jerk right now? But instead, in this particular situation, I just tried to use relational immediacy by just saying, hey, honey, I, I feel like I'm picking up signals that you seem upset or bothered by something. Is everything okay? And really that relational immediacy tool is kind of, A, gives you the opportunity to maybe stop and be like, oh my gosh, you're right, I know, it's been a long day. But B, it kind of invites you also that I'm recognizing you seem stressed about something. So rather than me getting mad at you and just kind of piling on, I kind of invite you to say what's really happening. And again, we've used this a lot in our own marital conflicts over the last 20 plus years, and it's been so helpful for us. So we've mapped out three steps for you out there, if you want to try to be relationally immediate in your next marital conflict. And the first thing is to make observations, not judgments. And Tracy, that's what you did. You didn't point fingers at me. You just said, hey, it seems like, and then you gave me your feedback. Yeah, the heart behind it is really not to call your spouse out and make them feel bad or worse than they're clearly already feeling. It's really just to kind of invite or kind of disrupt the pat the pattern that's currently happening where you're getting internally angry or frustrated that your spouse is acting that way. That you just kind of invite, you just say, hey, I'm observing this in your behavior. Are you okay? Like, I'm genuinely worried. Are you all right? Being wise to not want to pile on or make you feel worse, but just kind of say, hey, this is what I'm noticing right now. What's really going on here? Or what's happening under the surface? So that's the first thing. Remember to make observations. Try not to make judgments when you're being relationally immediate. And then second, invite the other person to either agree with you or disagree because they might not see it that way just yet. And you're not trying to sort of shove your opinion down their throat. You're just trying to help get past whatever that thing is that's getting in the way of your conflict resolution. Yeah. And again, this is as in any situation in marriage, I mean, it takes two people to do conflict well. So if you're kind of picking up on signs in your spouse and you kind of bring in that relational immediacy tool, then your, your spouse has to be willing to, to be honest then if they really are kind of struggling with something or they're upset about something else to say, you know what? Yes, if I'm being honest, I'm, I'm already irritated about something else you said two days ago and I didn't address it then and now it's coming up today. Or just to say, yeah, I'm tired, you know, or to say, no, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to come across that way. So you can, you know, you give your spouse room to agree or disagree with that, but it does require for both spouses to come to right any conflict with the desire to be healthy. It's not good for the spouse who maybe is feeling upset to, to not be genuine about it. That's not going to help your, your marriage moving forward. Now, step number three depends on your spouse's response to your observation. If they agree with your observation, then you can probably move forward together and start looking for solutions. And if they disagree with your observation, then you need to probably take a minute to make that conversation safe or even just take a break altogether from your conflict. Yeah, so back to that example that I gave of what happened between us a couple of weeks ago. You know, when I kind of had that moment of relational immediacy where I called out what I was observing, that you just seemed on edge, 
and just not yourself, you were able to say, you know what, I'm sorry, it's been a long day. Just give me a few minutes to decompress and then I'll talk to you and I wanna hear about what you have to do. So it kind of avoided an unnecessary conflict between us by the way you responded. You kind of agreed, you knew you were on edge and then we moved forward. And I was, I honored that, right? I gave you some space. But if you're dealing with a situation, this has happened before where I, there's been times where you're like, hey, you know, you seem defensive when I just brought up that topic. And sometimes, you know, I might be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't mean to be defensive and I may not agree with that. So then in that situation, I think it's best to say, you know what? Okay, that's fine. It, you know, do you want to keep talking about it or do you want some time? Right? Is there a better time for us to talk about this particular conversation? So again, this is what's hard with relational immediacy or anything we talk about with healthy conflict and marriage. It really does take two people being willing to be productive in those conversations and dealing with their own emotions and being honest about how they're feeling and coming to conversation ready to talk about things because the ultimate goal is that you move through a conversation and you get to solutions, both people feel heard and you move forward. But what can be hard is if one spouse is kind of digging in their heels or they don't want to be honest or they're mad about something and they're not being forthright about that at the time, you just have to keep working on that for both couples on either end of the conversation. And I think it's important maybe for us to speak to that because that most likely for couples out there who have never practiced relational immediacy before, I bet you your spouse is not is not going to respond kindly to it, maybe. I guess it depends. I just know for me, the first time you did this with me, Trace, I felt a, probably a little defensive. And like you said, it's even to this day, it still happens where, uh, you know, the other spouse isn't maybe ready to talk about it like an adult. You know, maybe they're not ready to say, you're right. I'm just get I'm just getting fired up about this or or your 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 observation is correct. The truth is, most of the time, your observation is correct. I'm just not ready to talk about it. I think, again, in that case, don't force the issue, mm -hmm. probably. You're gonna, hopefully, once you had a chance to think about it and process it, you can come back later, which is what we've done many times, Tracy. You can come back later and you can say, you know what, you're right, I was defensive, or I was short with you, I was snippy with you, and now you're in a place, both of you are in a place, where that relational immediacy really pays off. Yeah, so keep working at it. You know, communication and healthy conflict takes practice and time. So don't give up on it. Keep trying it. Hopefully relational immediacy could be another tool in the kit for you.